Okay, so yeah, you I saw the, I saw what you did here, and it looked good. Um, I just uh, I guess I'm not really sure what because I I added my comments basically saying you know okay this is like what we where we need to go from here. Um, this all looked good to me. Uh, we still need I think I also forgot to say that we need a test for the um, the changes to the CSV, um, but. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, it looks like it's it's doing what we want here. Um, but we do need to make sure we add a test for the CSV source, and then we obviously need to um, finish, complete the tutorial, right? Uh -huh, okay, yeah. I, I'm on to that. Okay. It will cool. take a little time because exams are going on, but I'll yeah, finish no that worries. as soon as possible. No worries, no worries. Yeah, so, but this looks, I mean, it looks good. Um, let me just add that because I did forget to say that we need a test. Did I say that? No, we did. I just said about the documentation. So let's also add a test for CSV source to make sure that the uh, loading, which was added there, works. And then I didn't see, let's see. Oh, there's there's some sort of oh I bet it's because we merged that um all right yeah so there was uh the repo got changed to record and then um uh and then the imports got cleaned up um yeah, it's so those probably like, caused conflicts uh, yeah I did that two days ago uh, before opening the pull request so I didn't uh, uh, get pull up stream and yeah such. okay so I think and I think that's why it's not running the CI tests is because it's not uh, it's got complex. I will I will I'll update and push a commit so that I can see if there, if there is any failing test or anything cool cool that would be great all right sweet is that all then uh, yeah, I don't have much. I will uh, cool. get to the docs and the testing, and I'll let you know. Great, great, cool. Yeah, that looks, I mean, it's looking good. That looks like, uh, I mean, it looks like what it's supposed to be. Um, so. Also, I added a comment in one of the files. Uh, yeah. With the hashtag to do. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I didn't understand what you meant by this. Like, uh, like, to like preserve what, uh, both values basically, or yeah, so a file name will also be shown and the data will also be shown. Okay, if you want me to do it like that, uh, I don't because okay, what would the use Go case on. for this be? I guess no, I just uh. I think uh, if uh, I change the file name, I change the file name to image right in the columns, so it wouldn't matter much. I think I added it. Um, I added it in very in the very beginning when I was doing it, so I think now it makes sense of what uh, uh, what I did. So I don't think that's needed. Maybe we don't need that. Okay. All right. Cool. Great. Um. Yeah, cool. Yeah, this looks perfect. I mean, this looks like exactly what we talked about. So, this is great. Okay. Nice job on this. Thank you. All right, let's see. So, let me write this down in our meeting minutes. So, PNG files is coming along well. Um, uh, config loader implemented. Need to rebase. Top of I need to merge master. All right, let me just make some quick notes here. We need to merge master. We'll add a test for CSV source loading column and add docs with tests for MNIST. All right, great. And then, of course, just yeah, you you can you can drop if you want. I know if you're if you're busy. Um, but yeah, 
so uh, after that i will work on the pre processing stuff and get it done quickly that will be cool that will be very cool yeah that would be sweet um and let's see i think we initially talked about the pre processing stuff um when we were talking about that uh um, uh, I think it's issue three seventy. Okay, yeah, here it is. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Okay, and this was all the stuff with the, yeah. And this is hopefully I'll get to that. I'm trying to get to that config stuff, but I've been really swamped, and then not feeling good lately. So I'm I'm hoping to get to that soon. But because uh, unifying the config will help. Um, that one issue that we've been talking about, like unify the config stuff um will is this it no um will help us uh be able to do this easier i think um since we have to do this uh sort of uh what was it it was yeah this dict stir pre process op config um i feel like i did something like that recently though i'm not sure what it was uh yeah i'm not sure what it was but i think it might be we might be closer slightly but yeah. Okay, cool. That's good stuff. And okay. then did you understand what I was saying about the, uh, was that clear about the tests? God damn it. Uh, the tests for the MNIST tutorial itself? Um, uh, no, I haven't gotten around to looking at that. But if I have any doubts, I'll ask you. Or if you have anything to tell me about it. Okay. Yeah, basically all it was was, actually I think I might have referenced it in the um let's see so did i reference it oh no i talked about that okay so let's just go look at it real quick but basically what that was talking about is if you go look at examples and if we look at let's see i'll pull up docs first so docs um quick start model so this I figured out how to sort of make it easier to test the model stuff or, or sorry easier to test the documentation um, because you know we end up with all these code block console things and like you know how do you test that effectively um, because you'd have to like parse these restructured text files and pull out all the console code blocks and run them well instead i figured okay let's just do this literal include block on a sh file um so that way we have and let me just pull this up here just pull it up side by side so we can see exactly what's going on here uh, okay quick start oops these are all the Okay, this is what I meant to pull over here. Anyway, so these end up. Oh well, okay, it doesn't do it on here, but damn it! All right, let me pull up the real docs. Um, uh, okay, so this ends up pulling in these files, like the contents of those files, right? and pasting them into the documentation here um, and that way what we can do is we have those files in these folder like in this folder here and in this case we might put it in the test folder this one happens to be in the examples folder but this is like let's see so the first one was train data um, and so then this is just the contents of that bash script right um, and then what we can do with that is when we're writing the test um, we can essentially like test the documentation by just you know doing whatever's in the docs right and running those same scripts right so the this one runs the the train data test data predict data um and then down here it runs the train script which is the next one here then it runs the accuracy script um, and then it runs the predict script right and so those map over to the command line versions of dffml right so that we're we're ending up running it with the right um we, we end up running what we're actually seeing in the documentation and that way our documentation will always be correct right because i know we've had it's hard to keep the documentation in sync um with the rest of the stuff because you know it doesn't fail the tests don't fail um whereas this will help us um know when we've when we've 
change something that also needs to change in the documentation. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, uh, let's see. Um, okay. So that's and then that so that's that looks good. Um, nice. Yeah, nice job on that. Looks like we're off to a good good start there. Um, and then let's see. So who else do we have on here? Uh, we got Himanshu. So and Yash and Ogden. So uh, Himanshu, how are you? Let's see. I know we still haven't figured out the. Uh, I've, yeah, I've been trying to figure out what the hell is going on with that boost. Where is that damn pull request? Um, the boost library, right? It's still not working. Um, yes. Yeah. The second one. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and then I looked around and I was trying to figure out maybe there's an alternative to this. Like we talked about Conda. Um, there's somebody who was running Conda within GitHub Actions, um, and, but they were doing it on Windows. Um, so I was thinking, you know, maybe we could just sidestep this thing by running it with, you know, installing it in Conda. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so in Conda, it actually works on my system. It works it does. perfectly. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> sorry. Um, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. That if we could figure out, I mean, you know, that's it's obviously that's an option, especially since we took out that virtual environment stuff. I, there was there was some reason we had that. Can't remember what it was, um, but I think the uninstall takes care of it or whatever. So, um, the let's see, yeah, if we can figure out how to do Conda in the, I mean, this will probably help us going forward, right? Because this is not going to be the first time we do this. Um, there's going to be other libraries that have compile time dependencies. TensorFlow is just really nice because they compile everything for everyone, um, so mm -hmm. you don't have to deal with this. Um, but yeah, if we can figure out how to use Conda, that might be good. What else have you been working on lately? Uh, yeah, so this is it because this code is done. Uh, I am yeah. waiting for Rahul to review this. Yeah. And uh, one, another thing I was looking actually, I wanted you to see, yeah, I have pasted a link. I have put a link in the, uh, Twitter. you can check. Can you check that? Yeah. So uh, last time you were saying right, ki, uh, we, we may we want to add the NLP models that can generate the sentence and all those things. Yes, yeah. Yeah, so I looked at this and this looks cool to me. Cool, so, yeah. So if you can see at the bottom they have given how to use it. Yeah, so they have very, very easy API and they have everything. Uh, you can go a bit down. Uh, yeah, from here onwards. Oh, so and here's the BERT stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, so they will just load the pretend model, and so you can check this one. PF2. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. So, uh, so, so, so this, this one only. This one only. You can check. This guy. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Okay. This is the command line stuff. Okay, yeah. Let, let me see. Let me see if I can share my own screen. Okay. Cool. <coughs> is it? Is it visible? Uh, no, not, not yet, no. Is, is it yes, now? yes, now we've got it, thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so like, we have, uh, we can take a model, and then we can uh, take the model from the pretend model, and then uh, they have a specific, uh, specific. Uh, okay, where is it gone? Let me see. Did the change this? Okay, I guess they just change the documentation. Okay, change 
just just a second let me see model sharing okay, so uh, let's let just see this one okay so these are the models all the models that, that they have so they, all of them are pre-built Nice. So we can have so in the models we can take the models and we can load them from the pretend weights. They already have the pretend weights. We don't need to worry about loading and doing the stuff that we were doing right. in the TensorFlow Hub. Okay, so it's like model class from pretend <coughs> and pretend weights. They are already there, and then we can just this is for like a, then we can simply make this for the PyTorch. And similarly, we have for this uh, TensorFlow stuff load from pretend input ids and this is all the stuff that is specific to the um, specific to the bird stuff and then we can save also we can do a lot of stuff with this like everything wow, this is, is great there. yeah this is great wow this so, is really cool yeah so we and i think they just removed it from the page otherwise they have everything yeah like from the generation of the sentence to all the stuff so like very cool yeah so if if you say i can uh work on this one and yeah of course yeah it. let's make an issue so that we track it um let's see so yeah here i'll make an issue here and then that way we'll be tracking it within the issue tracker um we'll add it to the meeting minutes docs too so let's see um so, so We'll be working on transformers next for more NLP models. Um, yeah, but uh, this week I won't be probably working because from yeah. next week I have exams. So yeah, of course, of course, yeah. And uh, are you planning to keep these models in GSOC this time? Uh, am I plan? Are we planning to what? Uh, adding uh, this uh, as a GSOC project. Oh yeah, you know I I should have written that under the the ideas page. Let's let's just change that right now. Um, because obviously adding more models is always a good thing. Um, so let's see. And I believe where is that issue? It should be listed here. Um, and this is what I was saying about how well, you know, I knew there was more models. I knew there was more issues that were not um, that were not that were not listed under the ideas that should be um, or or more things, right? Let's see. Project ideas. Let's just change this real quick here. That way we don't forget. All right. Oops. And then obviously, you know. It doesn't. It's not limited to this stuff, um, but yeah. Let's see. Okay, and then I'll make a note for myself that we should update that with more specifics. And I was actually gonna. I was thinking about adding like a simplified. So our model API is like you know it follows that it follows that same. Um, where is that? Do, 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 do. Let's see. Okay. It follows this same pattern, right, with the double entry stuff, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which is not like that is so. A lot of a lot of DFML has to do with models, right? And with most of the models, like there's no network resources, so they don't really need to follow this pattern. Um, so I was thinking about making a a simplified version of the model um, class uh, that would basically be used, um, basically a more a more abstract version that would make it make it simpler for people to add models, um, because I think we're we're finding we've we've found that that there's a lot of code that that gets reused, um, for example, like the applicable yeah, yeah. features and stuff, that type of stuff yeah, ends yeah, up in each, it. yeah, it ends up in each model, right? So we yeah. probably, it's probably time to go through and figure out what is um, uh, time to figure out what 
uh, a simplified model model base class should be to make adding new models easier slash faster because um, that's I mean we're at the point now where we we have a few models we know we know we're, we know what what kind of things they all have to do you know what kind of abstract methods they might need or things like that because because right now we just have the three um, and we could probably be doing more more plumbing uh, work at the at the base class level um, to make it even easier to implement things um, so yeah that's that's sort of like something that needs to be done um, so I, I'll let me make an issue for this um, and let's see and then the other thing is once we have that we'll probably update the uh, tutorial sorry <coughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, I tried. I didn't make it to the mute button there. Um, let's see. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, we'll probably update. We'll we'll finally update that new model tutorial. Um, so to to be around this simplified API. Simplified API. Okay. So make it easier to write. Models easier, slash, more intuitive. Okay, and this is like uh, that's why I was doing this now is because uh, any ideas on this would be much much welcome. Right, you guys, most a lot of you have implemented models, um, and so you know any any ideas you have on on what are what are the things that need to like what how do we make this most simplified approach to this um is going to be that would be great um so and then let's see so just real quick while while we're all here um what i was thinking is we'll basically do the same thing as you know uh simple model right we'll probably do something similar to the existing model where we'll have um train predict and accuracy um because those are those are key right um uh, config okay and then and then here we might do so in the, this is this is just like tentatively what i was thinking and then you guys can give me your thoughts on this but uh, you know we'll do in the init we'll basically so within the a enter and the a exit methods was where we were trying to do the loading and saving of things um but that wasn't really ending up happening um we kind of we we've started to put things sort of all over the place um so i think we need we need to cons consolidate this type of stuff so we might this might even be like uh we might even need like a a load like that's an abstract method ab abstract base method Oh man, I'm really, really on top of my game today. All right, abs, just that abstract. That abstract or act method. All right, yeah. So basically, load data, load model data from disk, um, and then you know, same thing for save, and then train predict accuracy. So. And that's that's just sort of like rough draft. This is what I was thinking, um, and that way we 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 provide some more structure to things. Um, accuracy, and then predict. And so, any any thoughts on like you know how to make this real real clean would be much much appreciated. Um, just you know if you have any if you have any ideas basically from implementing models yourself that you're thinking hey this type of you know this is something that that I saw when I was implementing this a lot how could we add this to the base class or you know what abstract method could we add so that it it, it always is in a consistent place um, that's the type of thing we're looking for here um, okay. so yeah save 
model data to disk. Okay. Okay, great. Um, okay, well, we're above 400 issues in port requests now. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of stuff going on. Right, okay. And uh, uh, there was just one more thing I was just thinking. Yeah. Uh, because now we are uh, keeping on increasing the number of uh, arguments in command line, right? We have to write so many things. So uh, can we do anything for that? Because that is very repetitive. So like for training, we have to write so many arguments. And then for accuracy, we have to write again all those arguments. Yeah. For, uh, yeah so is there anything yeah. like we can have a file and config can be there I was... and we can load functions and do yeah that's a very good point um so yeah that was another thing that that i was thinking at one point and i know we we kind of we'd had some discussion on this at, at one point too um of whether the you know whether we should be able to swap out a config file for the command line options yeah. um and yeah. i think that it would be i think it would be a good thing to do um and at this point i think the config parsing is is mature enough that it should be a relatively small change um but yeah so let me let's make an issue for that too um okay so let's see um so hey uh it's again yeah, yeah. Uh, hello am i audible hey again yeah, yeah uh, i was just wanted to put him on that yeah. like uh i think it's better if we keep both like so, uh, some people might prefer the cli oh yeah we're definitely keeping both. Let's definitely keep both. I think, and that may have been where where this discussion died last time, is because I think, um, I think I might have brought this up, or somebody else did, and and then somebody said a similar thing, where like, I th I think it was the other Yash who's not on the call right now. I think he said, you know, um, a lot of people are using it via the command line, right? So if any of you, yeah. Using it via, yeah. Or maybe it was you again, yeah. But if you, it's like the common usage is via the command line, right? Um, yeah. So you don't want to, don't want to change those people's workflows, right? So yeah, it's nice to have a config file. Like I think PyTorch has something similar where you yeah. can have. A config file. I agree, and that was part of the original design principles of this thing was was you should be able to do everything via the command line, right? Um, and that was mainly because if we're um, <clears throat> If we're uh, that was that was mainly because like if you need to use this call out from some other language to use this right like if you have like a C program uh -huh. or you know a PHP program or, or anything right and and but you can you can call out via the console and run shell commands then you you would be able to do any machine learning that you needed to via DFFML um and so yeah so we're definitely want to keep all the uh command line flags so let's see config um <clears throat> add ability to uh specify command line flags via via a config file okay and so this is just tentatively uh what i was thinking so console um so you could do something like and let me guys let's let's put the put the group group feedback here um <clears throat> so let's see uh okay so flags we got config file okay great so do you have all train and then i was thinking like you know at train dot yaml or something and then if you put the at it's the same thing as um, so the train. Let's see. Well, let's grab a. <clears throat> uh, grab a, a train command here, real quick. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. Would be equivalent with equivalent to God damn it, console. Okay. 
So, you know, this command here, let me make this bigger. Wait, am I sharing my screen? Yeah. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> it's like, or else none of the, you guys are, yeah. Let's see. Or else none of this makes sense. <laughs> All right, okay, so <laughs> model. All right, so model. Okay, and this is currently the way that config files work is, I don't think we've finished. Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay, yeah, this issue. Uh, related. Okay, so there's this issue which is related, and you guys basically right now. Or wait, let me do two spaces. Arc is scikit lr config is features um let's see what was this this is like um what did we do here name all right yeah this is kind of like a pain in the ass but here's let's see all right sorry bear with me here guys d type and i just want to make sure we have a complete example before we drop this into oblivion or else we'll forget about it um d type int Set indented properly. Yeah, yeah. And then length. Length one. Okay. Expertise. Okay. Almost done here. I feel like that's not indented the same, but whatever. Come on. All right, whatever. Trust. Float. And I think I documented this. All right, so this has been documented. Let me just pull this up as well. Um, this is it's notes. Did we get the config stuff? Yes. Okay. So let me pull this reference here. Um, okay. <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, related this. Kind of this. Okay, so basically, what we've got here is is right now <clears throat> uh, the configuration stuff can be serialized into a dict object, and the dict object can be output as you know JSON or YAML, and this is what it ends up looking like, which is of course what we're doing over here. I'm just pasting the same type of stuff. Um, ooh, and I can copy from here. Great. Um, and so what we're gonna do is basically like if you specify you'd specify all the same command line stuff all the same stuff you'd specify on the command line i guess this is even a better example but you know if you had this on the command line it turns into this in the config file right and so if you wanted to specify the same thing on the command line multiple times um, or like any arguments that you wanted on the command line you could just do at and then the file um, and that syntax is like something that curl does where when they want to load the data from a file uh, If you want a curl command and you you have like some of your post data in a file You might say like at and then the file name and it'll pick up the data in that file name and use it there um, So I was thinking maybe we could just borrow that syntax and say, you know, like Maybe this is like model.yaml or something. Damn it What what did it just do there? model.yaml um, Okay, I hate it when it does this. I hate it when it does that. It always tries to. It's like this is in a pre-formatted block. I'm not trying to reference somebody's name. Okay. Um. She was. Right, let's try this again. Okay, there we go. All right. So yeah, if you did at model.yaml, it would take all of this stuff within this file, which would be model.yaml. Um and it would basically use these as command line arguments, right? Um, so then you could also put something like, you know, at, oh, it's gonna do it to me again, sources.yaml, oh, great, it didn't. And then you would have, you know, the, let's see. Oh, I guess we need to figure out how to do sources too. So something like sources.yaml, and then you could say uh, sources, Okay, here's how we would do that. Um, oh, this is not great. F equals CSV. Um, 
And then let's see where it is. Ooh, well, maybe we want to do it more like, I think. Let's see. Sources. Yeah, here's how we should do that. Uh, F. Let's see. Or no. Sources. Yeah. Uh, no, that is how we need to do it. Damn it. All right. F equals CSV. And then we'd have something like. Uh, okay, this is not beautiful right now, but. I don't know. We need to figure out sources. Let's just make an open for that. To do, figure out how to do sources in YAML. YAML file. Can, can we keep all of them in a single file, like sources? Yeah, and <clears throat> you could. You could. Yeah, but that. But the. I, <clears throat> sorry. Um, I you could you could keep it all in a single file. Um, but basically. I was just thinking, you know, right, every time you specify at, you load the arguments from that file. The, the reason why you might want to do multiple files is because if you have, you know, the same sources that you're using over and over again with different models, then you, you wouldn't want to hand edit the file, right? You just want to swap out, like, model, you know, you'd be like uh, TF model or something, and then you'd have, you know, um, database source sources right and that way you know if you switched uh if you switch from using the the database sources with the uh, scikit models yeah. models then not good. you know what i'm saying right then you would just yeah. swap out one of the files without editing them but yeah that, that was sort of the rationale behind that um does i mean what do you guys think about this does this seem like a reasonable approach uh should we do something else? Yeah, it's all on this end. Fine to me. Cool. It seems fine. All right. Let's just, uh, and then let's also make a note. Um, so let's see, figure out how to do sources in YAML file. Tricky because of need to configure sources class. And uh, because we've talked about this before, we're having we need we need to find a good way to configure this sources class, which means that we're also having a trouble exporting it and re-importing it. Um, <clears throat> need to configure sources class, and um, oh yeah, uh, deal with tagged um, tagged what is it? entry points. Great. Okay, so let's yeah, come on, come on, come on. So, so okay, simplify the model base class, and then we talked about okay, that's how we got into this. We were talking about simplifying the model base class, and then we were talking about uh, simplifying the command line arguments, or like you know making it easier. So, talked okay, command line argument. Get repeated over and over again. Can we put them in a config file? And then, uh oh. Come on, GitHub. Okay, great. So. Oh. They are having weird issues. All right. Let's see. All right. Okay. <clears throat> uh, all right. So what else? What else we got? No, no, this is it from my side. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that is. Uh, I like that. What was that? Trans. What? What? What was that called? Transformers. 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 Yeah. That looks yeah, cool. That will be very sweet. Yeah, and they looks like they have a, a clean API, so that's nice. You don't have to copy in that file and stuff like you had to do last time, so that's good. Sweet. All right. Good stuff. Um, and then, yeah, so this is ridiculous. I don't know what the hell is going on here. Like, this is completely insane. We install Boost. Like, this is the worst part of this, is that you can see it install Boost up here, and, and then it does it just like it doesn't exist. Lib boost. Like, how many lib boosts do you need to install before it exists? I'm not really sure. I'll I'll try to poke around on this some more, but I obviously I haven't had a ton of time 
lately. Um, let's see, I'm trying to, I need to get that web UI done by this weekend, um, or at least to the point where we can train and use a model. Um, yeah, I could not find boost. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. Anyways, yeah. So I guess maybe try Conda. See if, if you've got Conda. You're using it locally with Conda? Yeah, I'm using it constantly. I guess you, maybe you want to mess with the... And you probably want to mess with... So let's see. Uh, issues with... Avid. Um, boost. Compilation. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. Uh, oh, we were going to say try. Try seeing if Conda works in CI. Um, and that would probably be might have to edit the GitHub slash workflows slash testing dot email workflow uh, ideally changes just in CI run dot sh um, yeah it's not really ideally it's ideally for you in terms of <laughs> if you have to edit things but uh, and maybe not CI slash run dot sh like you if you 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 probably will have to edit this file this github workflows testing dot yaml um because i think there's some calls to pip in there that will need to be calls to conda or whatever and we'll need to figure out how to install conda within that environment um and so i think that'll have to go in the to the install dependencies section like we were doing with the boost stuff um but yeah so That'll be good yeah. good for the future. I mean, you might run into this as soon as you hit Transformers too. <laughs> so, because if they're using, or well, they're this isn't this is they're using TensorFlow. I don't know about PyTorch. PyTorch might be also better than yeah. Py, PyTorch might there, be better. There, there, are, there, there are one good thing like uh, we can use the PyTorch models with the TensorFlow also. Oh, so nice. they can interchangeably do the things. That's that really cool. Also good. So in future, if you do, then it'll be good for us. That's great. That's great. Cool. Yeah. Nice job. Nice job figuring this stuff out. Thanks. Let's see. All right. Um, so let's see. I think this is Theo. Theo's not on the call. So let's uh, let's uh, skip that. And then Sudarshan is not on the call. So I'll skip that for now. Um, let's see. Ridge from scratch. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what this guy's name is, but he's not on the call. Um, so we'll skip that from now. Um, and then this is Wolf Rabbit. This is contributing. Okay, this guy, I need to... He's been jumping on the on the getter. We need to get back to him. Um, okay. Let's see. All right, so yeah. Um, Yash, I still haven't... Um, I still haven't finished that cache download stuff. I'm sorry. Got it up here. Where, where was I? Let's see. Um, on branch. Oh, I know what was going on. Okay, so I got stuck because I know I think we have some people that are on Mac, um, and basically the thing is, so the thing is, if you need to download GoLang, and so you need to download, we need GoLang CI Lint, right? And we need, and I realized that Golang CI Lint requires a recent version of Go, because I have like Go 1.10 on my computer apparently, and it got mad about that. And it was saying that, you know, it's not compatible with that. So I realized, okay, we need to download a recent version of Go. Um, and so for the purposes of testing here, we basically need this tash, cache download and extract uh, situation. Uh, we need that to download the recent version of Go. The recent version of Golang CI Lint, and then we need to download the repository that we're going to scan. All right, so we have three things that we need to download. And then I was like, okay, well, all right, we've got some people on 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 OS X, and I at some point there was somebody on Windows. I saw their stack traces for Windows, and so I was like, okay, well, they're going to be confused if, if if we don't download the Go. So basically, we need to download the Go binary for Windows 
So if you're on Linux, we need to download the Linux binary. If you're on OS X, we need to download the OS X binary. If we're on Windows, we need to download the Windows binary. Or else when we try to run the go command or golang ci lint tries to run the go command, it's not going to be an executable that it can use. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, and so, uh, let's see. Um, uh Oh, and then the same thing for Golang CI Lint. You got to download the right one for those. So I kind of just got stuck. Like, basically, shutil, which is a module within the standard Python packaging system, it has this unpack archive, uh, unpack archive. Um, it has this unpack archive function, and this unpack archive function. It will take like, you know, if you pass it a path that it's a .zip file or a .tar.gz, it will extract it. Well, the problem is that it won't, it's not extracting, it's not, for the Mac OS tar file on Linux, well, okay, so, and this is like, maybe this is like something that I don't need to worry about. But okay, basically, I extract the, this is, this is, this is in, uh, this is in a temporary directory. I downloaded that that tar file, right? We download it with the, the cache downloader function. We extract it with the regular tar utility on Linux, like that tar command line utility. And in that directory, we end up with this go, we, we end up with the go binary, which is like exactly what we would expect. Um, and it's a Mac OS executable. Well, when we extract it with shutil unpack archive, it ends up, not even existing like it, there's nothing in that directory um and i guess i should probably i should i should probably just give up on this it'll probably just work on mac os but i was like all hung up on the fact that when you extract the archive the go binary isn't there um but it doesn't even matter when we're on linux uh, i guess but i was just worried that you know I don't, I don't i don't have a mac os system to test on and like what if it just won't show up there either this is kind of like a moot point right like right it does, I, i'm not sure who this person is but i know they existed at some point so i'll probably just skip that and uh and and push up that that uh what i have right now but just for linux and if anybody yells at us saying like I couldn't run this test on Windows or Mac OS, then like oh okay, like we'll we'll deal with that then, right? When we get there. Um, but that's that's why that's why this is taking longer. But I, I guess did you were you able to to get the npm stuff set up at all? Uh, hello. Uh, yeah, I was working on it, but actually I was caught up in the exams. Uh, okay. So yeah. Cool. I've... That makes sense. Yeah, but I have actually downloaded a, a package of uh, uh, JavaScript actually. Cool, cool, cool. Did you find, were you able to find one that had some vulnerabilities in it? <laughs> yeah, that was the tough part. I actually <laughs> three and four, and there was actually no errors, but uh, yeah. yeah, I'm uh, on it. Okay. I'll show, uh, I'm, this week I will be able to do stuff. Cool, cool. Yeah, so so one of the cool things that this is going to let us do is, uh, I mean, I had this, I, had, I wanted to do this with Docker containers, but we're gonna. I, I I never got around to, to finishing it. Um, but what this is, what this, what's cool about this is when we build this tool, we're gonna be able to go and uh, uh, we can do massive scans of everything, and we can say like, okay, like we did a massive scan of GitHub, and like here's all the projects that you know have vulnerabilities in them, whether they're in JavaScript, whether they're in Go, right? We'll we'll have this tool that 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 lets us point it at anything arbitrary, and then we can do this like run this massive scan and and yeah, you know have, have some cool. interesting results right um yeah and what you're finding obviously is of course like when you're well, yeah right like okay we gotta we gotta find the first test cases right so we, we have to do some sort of little manual scanning at first um yeah. so yeah it's it's tricky it's tricky um okay great great yeah. well i'm glad so are you are you kind of stuck on anything at this point or you were able to identify one are you still working on getting the whole getting the operation set up or uh i was actually just waiting for uh, that cache download okay. extract and, okay uh, after that i i actually want to figure out what to do after that yeah okay. you were actually gonna 
you were actually going to push some cast for yeah uh, cash download. yeah i was okay. i was going to do that so that's and that's what that's what uh yeah i got i just got all i got kind of down a rabbit hole there that i probably didn't need to go down okay. um so i'm just going to make it work for linux so let's see um john got down rabbit hole i will just make make work for linux um so once John pushes example, um, I'm not down the rabbit hole. Uh, all right. So once John pushes example, all right. So here's what here's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna push. So on top of this, okay. Where's that pull request? Come on. Uh, where to go? Where to go? Here we go. All right. So basically, what I was going to do is, um, okay. So you merge, great. Um, I'm just gonna push. Am I? Let's see. Am I? Did you check that thing that says maintainers can push to this branch? Yeah, maintainers can push. Okay, great. I, I, so I'm just I, gonna. I Great, great. So once John uh, gets cached, download and extract working, he'll push the uh, he'll push it to master. So I'll push it to master, and then and I'll I'll um, Add to your Golang CI uh, lint test case to use the function, and that way, and push that push that to your branch, and that way, you'll see you'll see how it works, right? And we'll have it we'll have it up there. It'll run in the CI. We'll make sure everything's working in the CI. We'll merge that Golang CI lint um, command um, stuff. Um, we'll, we'll merge the Golang stuff. Uh, then you can use uh, <laughs> that test case. For JavaScript, yeah, closed. yeah. As a reference for JavaScript, NPM audit stuff. Okay, cool, great. And uh, one more thing, uh, one issue that you created about uh, there was about Git World Finder, which is a CVE search. Let's see, which one was this? Uh, uh, issue number three ninety. Oops. Oh yeah. Oh, this looked cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is something, this is something, uh, yeah. So this is, uh, yeah, and that's why I added this note too. Um, yeah, I actually searched for it and I found it good. Uh, it, it is a good thing. I actually searched. Yeah. It seems pretty cool. So yeah. So basically, right, the way that this should I tool is going to work is is it's going to say, okay, what, 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 uh, right now what it does is it just works on Python stuff, right? So what we need yeah. to do is, and, and within the, the demo, there's a, there's a usage example where we combine some of this stuff that the, the, we, we've got some other operations that run on Git repos and do assessments on Git repos. And so this is something we'll probably want to add into that, um, those those operations um which are actually i'll show you where they are right now basically so uh, no worries uh, feature git uh, so here we go all right so these guys uh, they do things on Git repos, right? And so they'll do something like, oops, 
So this one grabs the default branch of a Git repo, right? So as an input, it takes the Git repository and it outputs the branch, um, and it'll you know run some Git commands and and they'll figure out some things about anything that's a Git repo, right? So right. the idea here would be that we'll probably add this guy. Oh no, this is huge. Um, okay, so we'll probably add this to something that we would use within this Git repo features right or well this is this is it used to be called the operations used to be called features and the, this hasn't gotten renamed yet um so we'd probably want to make an an operation that runs this git vuln finder right on the git repo right and so then what we'll have long term what we're going to end up with is when you run should I on something, it'll say, okay, what's the language and what's the version control system? If the version control system is Git, then I can run all of these Git operations on it. And then as well as, you know, I'll run whatever the static analysis tools for that particular language are, right? So we're trying to create something that basically you point it at anything that uses all the, all the information available um, to come up with everything security related about this, about this repo. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, That'll probably go in here, and let me make let me just add this here. So this and that, I don't think those have nice unit tests. So let's see. Uh, this will probably be an operation that gets added to paste. Okay. Um, but if you wanted to like get um. <coughs> Um, sorry. Uh, if you want, like, if you wanted to just try writing the operation to do this, like, and the other thing is, this is Python, so, uh, so, is this like? There's a question of, is this like, uh, okay, poetry install git bone git bone finder. Poetry is like a pip. Um, hmm. Let's see. Maybe. Okay. I wonder if this is installable via pip2. Who knows? All right. So Python application. Okay. Um, okay. You can import it. So we might just import it instead of running it as a separate process and like, you know, write the regular Python to, to use this yeah. instead of like calling out to the sub process. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, you could get started on this wherever, whenever you wanted, you could, you know, write, uh, you could write that as a part of a, you know, you could just, if like, if you wanted to go try to mess with putting it in this file, you could, um, or you could put it in another file within like what you, what you might want to do is, I guess here, let me, let me edit this. You wouldn't want to put it in that file. You would want to add another file. Uh, yeah. It's probably an operation that gets uh, that uh, is run by or like that lives in a new file in this directory, right? So you would create it under there, and just like you've been going into, um, you know, example, should I and running your tests, you would be now going into feature git and running your tests. Um, and then you would add the new test, you know, into the respective. It would be like feature git tests is where you would add the new test for this. Um, if you want to, yeah, if you want to get started on that. Yeah, I will try to work on this. It seems cool to work cool. on. Cool. Yeah, it would be a good one. So let's let's make a note of this. So. Um, uh, Yash will be working on git on finder within the feature git directory we'll be working on adding git bone finder within the feature git directory uh, okay cool great awesome and then i'll yeah. try to get that to you today um for real this time i'll stop uh stop worrying about osx and windows <laughs> <laughs> all right cool no worries thank you great yeah thank you all right so i think uh Everybody, every I, I, I believe Agan and I probably have some 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 rather deeply data flow things to talk about here. Um, so unless you like, if you guys want to hear about all this data flow stuff, feel free to stay. But I know we are at time, and so I'm sorry for keeping you late, Agan. Um, but yeah, it's nice. Okay, cool.
great. I'm um, sorry, one second, I got a cough. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's, fine, it's, uh, fine. it's really taking me down here. All right. Uh, okay. uh, I think I'm going to dip now. All right. Cool. Uh, get well soon, John. All right. Hey, thanks. Have a good one. John, I'll be good. Uh, I had to prepare for exams. All right. Yes, of course. See okay. you guys. Have a good one. Good. Yeah, get well soon. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Get well soon, John. All right. So, um, all right, yeah, sorry for keeping you late. Um, I just thought no, it's we, it's we'll like, probably have, have some time to keep late, so. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why I didn't interrupt. Like, I had some stuff to talk to. <laughs> yeah, all right, so <laughs> let's see. Okay, so the loop, you were totally right on the loop. It took me a while to figure that out. I was like not thinking that I was sick. I was yeah. like, I just have some bad allergies. And I was like not able to figure anything out. And then I realized I'm definitely sick. I should have been able to figure out this what you were talking about here earlier. Um, no, I didn't uh, see that like immediately, but once I started going, I was like, oh, this is going to come back. What am I going to do? Yeah, yeah. I only this is now. Okay, so. Yeah, I but think. But I guess, yeah, if we have a bad editor, I hope it should be fine. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. I was kind of, I was kind of like think, I was trying to figure out, okay, do should should we add something to the operation? But, but I think that makes sense. Like tag, I think that that makes a lot of sense to tag the operation itself as a validator, um, because then it'll be clear that that this operation is supposed to be doing that. Um, and then the other thing that we'll need to do is this is we'll we'll I mean this is not a part of this, but at some point we can. Uh, we can add it to the visualization um, part of things. Yeah, I actually wanted here. to ask on it. I don't uh, like. Can you work on it during this period? Uh, is it allowed? Oh, this stuff. As in, uh, like, there was one thing now where you can just uh, drag and drop stuff and it. Like, oh yeah. Make the data flow. Um, I mean, I don't really. I, I was so I was talking to Terry yeah. about it and stuff and and like that would kind of end up being JavaScript work, not Python work. JavaScript, um, yeah, but yeah. you've done like a million things in Python already, so it's kind of like you know it's like an yeah. But I think like, uh, we doing. can still have so, a back back one on it. I think that connect stuff. No, I really wanted to do that. But yeah, I, I think it's a. I think take I think, some think, time. Yeah, I think I think that if you wanted to work on that, it's like. You know, a part of things that's definitely something to, to put in their proposal. I, I definitely yeah, like I, take note to I, it. I like when, when I went through the memory, no, like I, I saw that you put a plot of I, I had some doubts regarding that too. Like, I think you have made almost all the to do's and issues, right? Sorry, what? Like, there were some to do's in memory, no, I think you made all of the issues like last time. I noticed yeah. a couple of issues. And I think most of, like, a lot of those to do's are. Um. Uh, yeah, I think some of them are already done. Yeah, I think there's some are already done. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh. Let's see. Oh, okay. Let's see what happened here. I didn't see a comment back on this. Oh, yeah. Basically. Oh, this would be. Uh. Sorry. Uh. Run data flow. Yeah. So this is run data flow. So. Um. Run data flow is actually a operation implementation context. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So in operation implementation context. Um, so, all right. One second. Ah. Yeah, ah. Sorry, I had to blow my nose. Um, so that's the in operation implementation context. Yeah. Um, because what the op wrapper does is it creates a operation implementation context. Come on, comment. It keeps doing this to me lately. Um, it won't like, okay, let's see. Good. Okay. What, um, yeah. So what, uh, what the operation, the op, sorry. Nice one. Oh. Man, yeah, this thing really got me all of a sudden. I was not, I was not expecting to get sick again. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so what the op wrapper does is, <clears throat> it, 
it creates a operation implementation context class and it creates an operation implementation class and then okay. it makes the run method of let's just look at it actually This is not as well organized as it could be, uh, but is anything usually not? Uh, let's see. Okay, up. Okay, yeah. So basically, <clears throat> okay. So <coughs> okay. So sorry. Let's see. So this goes through, and it basically says, okay, like here's this. These are these are where all the the you know where you can say like imp enter. Like I think you've seen that before, and then you've seen the context enter, the config class, and then the keyword arguments end up just being the things that you would pass to the operation um, class um, to instantiate the operation, like the inputs and outputs and extends and stuff. Um, and so. Uh, imp enter in context, or well, I'll show, let's, let me just show you this stuff first. So, right, so what we do is we uh, we create the uh, this is for yeah we create the implementation class, and uh, the implementation class basically just says um, you know if you it's this because the thing is the operations. So, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get some water here. I should have thought of this. Uh, okay, so. Let's see. Uh, have some water. Let's see. Yeah, the, 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 the operations really follow the same pattern, right? Because everything has to follow that same double context entry pattern. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so the op wrapper really just hides that fact um, behind, you know, it just, it hides that by making it easier to use, just like we have to create that simplified model interface. Um, okay, so, so what it does is it creates the class and then it assigns the class to a property of the function. Um, cause Python, <laughs> um, <Yeah>. and, uh, <laughs> cause we can do whatever we want. Um, yeah. so, so, and then the other thing that it does is it works whether you have a, so you can wrap, you can wrap a function or you can wrap a operation implementation yes. context itself and then have it create the implementation, right? Because the amount of yeah. times where you really like there's, uh, basically, like I just did, I did a lot of work to try to make this very easy to use. This is very wacky shit in this part of this in the op wrapper. Now the result is that it makes it very easily easy to create op operations. Um, yeah, I usually just skip through that part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, so it yeah it ends up creating the context, and within the context, it it. Uh, it will call the actual function, right? Like as the run method. So the, the operation okay. implementation context, all implement run. And then within there, they, they actually call the function themselves. Um, okay. And why were we talking about this? Oh, because um, in the, uh, let's pull up that actual context. Um, yeah, so when we create the, when we create an operation implementation, and uh, let's see, where was it? Oh yeah, okay. So when we create the context, the operation implementation context, we pass it the orchestrator context, and we pass it the orchestrator it's context. So yeah, so that so that it can yeah, have, uh, yeah so that yeah. it can create yeah so that that's where self OCTX gets set. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and so, so what we really, and that's why we're doing self dot parent or wait, no, oh, yeah, yeah. oh no, we're doing self dot, this is, we do self dot OCTX dot parent because what that ends up doing is 
this is the orchestrator, right? And this is the orchestrator context. So OCTX is the orchestrator context. So when you call the base orchestrator, it creates you a new base orchestrator context, right? So now you've got like a whole nother, uh, you've got you've got a whole nother orchestrator to run operations in, right? Or to run your data flows in. But what we really want to do is we want to do, we just want to create a method that, that basically just does this and then does this all in one shot, right? And so what you're going to need is, uh, let me, I forgot to add this. You're going to need context lib dot uh, async. Yeah, sorry about that. Sync context manager. Oh no, where's uh let's see. Where is that? Where's context lib? Right here? Let's just find context lib. Context lib. You're gonna need this to do the async with. Yep. Um, By async. the way, are you recording this? Yes, yes, I am recording this. Oh. So we can yeah, I've, I'm sorry, I haven't recorded everything. I know it's... <coughs> I know. Uh, usually, this other stuff I can keep track, but this gets Yeah, this gets good computing, so... Yeah. I'll post it right afterwards. Yeah. Um, okay, so you'll need to use contextlib.asyncontextmanager. Oh, wait, this is what needs to be... Okay. Uh, why is that? Uh, uh, because uh, because you need to yield uh, within an async def function. Uh, so if you do async def and you do yield, you mm -hmm have to do async context manager um, because okay so if you do <clears throat> if you want to use it within a with statement right so we're doing async with self dot parent okay. um, as uh, so within a with a normal context manager you would do with something as blank right yeah. and whatever you would do so so and whatever, like this OTCT, this OCTX ends up being uh, whatever is yielded by the result of calling parent, right? Okay. And oh. so, but if you, but if you regularly do a yield, right? If you do a yield and you didn't use a context manager decorator from context lib, what you end up with okay. is a generator, right? Like any function that yields things oh, yeah, is yeah. a generator. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah like, so yeah. so we need to use these context lib uh, wrappers or these yeah these context lib de decorators so that we make sure that things aren't generators and instead they're treated as context managers. Honest, yeah. Yeah, and so. That'll let us, us use them in the with statement because you, with the first thing you, you're going to basically implement this function, right? And you're going to decorate oh, okay. this function with the async context manager, and then oh, okay. you're going to oh, the so first... it'll start it will return an orchestrator and it'll register that. Like it'll do yeah. both of these in just exactly function. right. You'll just basically say okay. as, you'll basically do this and then you'll yield OCTX, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, all of this context manager stuff is pretty confusing, but it's super helpful because everything gets cleaned up when you're done. So if there's yeah. any errors that get thrown, this is like the whole reason why everything uses async IO and everything uses context management is because yeah, if you yeah, always, like, yeah, yeah. if you always okay. use context management, your errors always get cleaned up. And if you always use async IO, your network errors always get handled properly. If you're not using async IO, the just I've I've yet to see a project do good job handling network errors properly because I mean that's the point of the event loop is like you have to handle all the network errors properly. Okay. Um, but yeah, so basically it just it just helps us make sure things things are clean. But basically, yeah, if you do this all in one shot, um, then you'll be able to register this this shove, subflow as as like one one operation here. Oh, okay. yeah. And you may even want to do it as like. Uh, you may even 
want to do, let's see. Um, there was something that I was thinking of. Okay, so there's a few cases here, right? There's basically, there's the case where, so we, we start the subflow, right? And hmm. we have, so we start the subflow and we have inputs that haven't yet, um, like inputs in the seed of the parent flow that need to get forwarded to the subflow, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, the inputs are in the seed of the parent flow. They need to get forward to the subflow. So when we start the flow, subflow, they need to get forwarded right away, right? So that's that's one case. Yeah. We've got another case where the subflow is running the the parent flow gets an input that needs to get forwarded and it needs to get forwarded it, so it just forwards that one right away um, uh, there's another case where the subflow is running it got the inputs from the parent but now it started a new context within it right so now like does that context receive this is so so in the first case we we had seed inputs from the parent and we started this subflow and then we forwarded them in this okay. case we had the subflows running but now the subflow has a new context running within it right so there's okay. like you know maybe you know there may there's multiple contexts running in it and now mm -hmm. we need to decide like do we oh. forward the inputs to every new context or do we just forward them to like the initial context um, yeah, okay. but it's also like I, it's basically the reason why I bring this up is because that determines how long do these inputs stay hanging around for right because yeah, yeah. in the current way we're doing things like we have that list and it's good to do this because then every time a new context gets started it gets right. forwarded right yeah, yeah the problem is that yeah, if this yeah, is yeah, like yeah. a long running thing then who's to say that that list of like i need to keep forwarding this some things like doesn't just grow indefinitely um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah in which case i kind of think that maybe uh Right, this is where this is just like this is and this is why I like wanted to spend a lot of time on this to try to figure out what happens here because I think we're we're we we risk a situation where um where we have uh, something that grows like, indefinitely. Maybe, especially you now since we have images and all yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, you know, all this all this data is gonna get if we're gonna we're gonna have lar large data and we're gonna have lots of it. Um and if you have yeah, yeah. long asynchronous flows you're going to end up with it just keep piling up. Sorry, one second. Yeah, so I think this is, I don't, like, I don't know. What, what do you, what do you really, like, do you have any thoughts on this right now? Because uh, right now I'm kind of thinking that. Yeah, I thought about it, but. Uh, like, how would we know if one context needs it or not? Like, do we have a way, or do we just uh, can just enforce it and document it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's, there's always, we can always just document it as being one way, right? So, uh, I, I think that. But even then, uh, like, do we have an order for this? No, right? Like, since all this is us saying, uh, uh, we don't know when one context starts. No. Yeah, so, you like, don't. How will we know when we have to clear this list? Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, so here's the thing. Okay, so one way that we could do this is we could say, um, you register, or let's see. Uh, uh, it's all very asynchronous is the problem. So it's like you don't know when you kicked off your initial ones. Like, who's uh, to say your initial yeah. ones are not, like, you know, the same as any ones that happen later. Um, yeah. So uh, I think that when we do register subflow, we can mm -hmm. add it to something that's kind of like the seed. You know how, like, data flow seed? 
there's yeah, this yeah. function seed inputs. Uh, I don't, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think that seed inputs might be a good place to add. <coughs> okay, so so this... I thought about adding that to the seed, but won't it be the same? Like, well, also <laughs> well, we only add it once. So basically, in this situation, what we do would be we create something that's sort of like local to the orchestrator that's like dataflow.seed, but it's like, you know, okay. orchestrator. Well, I guess this is received from parent flow. This is already orchestrator local, right? Or where is yeah. this? Let's see. Is this in the network context or memory input network context? Okay. Yeah. So I guess it, it stays in here, right? Wherever wherever yeah. that seed inputs function is. Let's go find that. Sorry. All right. Um, yeah. All right. So... The nice thing about putting it here, I think, is because what happens here is is we're adding this set of things to every context, right? As soon as that context gets run, and okay. so for what we do is is you when you register the subflow, you take everything that needs to be forwarded at that point in time, and you put it in some structure that that will end up like here right so something equivalent to self.config.dataflow seed something like you know you could put self dot uh uh receive from parent flow right but this is now within because self here i think is the orchestrator right um yeah so memory orchestrator so you'd move receive from parent flow to the orchestrator and uh <clears throat> and then when you register the subflow, you say, okay, everything that's pending gets added to, uh, you know, re receive from parent flow. And then you modify a seed inputs to add, you know, anything that's in received from parent flow also to this input set, right? So you'd basically, I think you would just have to modify these two things here, right? Um, mm -hmm. To basically say, okay, like, you know, if it's an input set, then you, then you add you know, you add another for loop here, and you add another of this monstrosity here. That really could have just been a for loop. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm all generator happy. Um, let's I see. like. I thought about adding stuff to seed, so I tried. To, uh, I wanted to know if like this are copied or the reference is being passed. So I tried printing the IDs of the all of the things, but all of the point was the same thing. So do they really use memory, or is it just pointers? How does this work? I'm not... Wait, sorry. Say what? Like uh, the receive from parent flow. No, so it uh, adds all those stuff to additionally. So yeah. uh, I tried printing whatever is being added. I tried printing in like different contexts and in printing the parent. So all of them had the same ID. All of them so, had the same ID. Oh, oh. Well, that's yeah. because any object Python internally will. Uh, as long as you haven't modified an object, it's just passing references. Yeah, it's just passing references. Yeah, oh. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's all just pointers. So, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, that, that's what that's the part where I'm confused about. So if that's so, how does moving it here change it? Like, well, so so, so the reason why moving it here might be good is because <clears throat> what we do is. We put it here, right? So, so we put it. Yeah. We we take receive from parent flow and we move it into the orchestrator context. Then, whenever okay. we call seed inputs, we add the things that were received from parent that were in receive from parent flow, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And so, what was in receive receive from parent flow contains anything that was added when the orchest when we did register subflow, right? So anything, yeah, as soon yeah. as they call register subflow, we, uh, we, we, uh, we, we add all of that stuff, right? So now every other time we call, uh, every other time we call, what is it? Forward inputs to subflow. Hmm. We don't bother with adding it to that, to that list, right? Um, our, uh, I guess... Maybe, oh, maybe no, this is what it should be. It should be anything that's in the parent flows seed. 
Well, then it should just be in the Sempla's seed. Maybe that's maybe that's what what we're dealing with here, is the fact that like we're trying to just add things to the parent flow seed and then forward them to the subflow when really we should just yeah. be adding them to the seed of the subflow. Oh, you see yeah. what I'm saying? Because uh, if so, if as if you if so, I think part of part of the issue here is if the context is not running right then does it really need to have the input forwarded to it? Oh, okay. Well, it only really needs to have the input forwarded to it if it's in the seed, it right? Is, uh, like if we put it in the seed, yeah. we're saying we want you to forward this, We w or we want every context that gets started to have this input, right? <clears throat> okay, okay. Well, uh, and... and so what was the what was the context that we were doing this in? We let's 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 like step back and figure out why we were doing this in the first place, right? I I think I'm just realizing I I just realized here that like we may be going down a rabbit hole, right? We're trying to figure out like what what situation yeah, do we yeah, do yeah, this? Yeah. What situation do we do this? Well, why why are we trying to do this in the first place, right? Um, and we were trying to do this in the first place because it will help us with the other pull request, <clears throat> um, which is the SQLite guy, right? Because we wanted to forward... Uh, and the other one which Yash is working on. Like, we need to figure out the language oh, yeah. and... Exactly, yeah. yeah. That will need to get forwarded too. Um, so... Uh, I think th this issue started from the... Let's see. Let's, yeah, let me... Let me open them both real quick. Maybe let's look at the meeting minutes too, because I have a feeling that we might be we might solve our own question here if we just look at why we were doing this, right? Because there's 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 several cases here, and we only care about a few of them. Uh, let's see. Okay, forward ports. Okay, well, maybe we didn't make note. Uh, let's see. No, we're not. Uh, I screwed up there. Okay, let's see. What were these issues? Okay, and this issue was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think this all came from. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh wait, where am I? We got so much just going. On. I'm sorry. Sorry, I don't have more of a clear, clear view of this. We've got so much going on here. It's hard to keep everything straight. Okay. So. <clears throat> Let's see if I'm okay. Where were we on this? <coughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, oh yeah. So what we've got here is we've got the repo. Um, <clears throat> The repo will be the instance, or yeah. All right. So the subflow, the subflow in this case is that scraping all the get feature data, right? Yeah. yeah. And so what we want to do is we want to forward the repo, um, which is the right. We want to forward the repo URL. Um, so each time we add. A repo URL to the parent flow. We need it to get added. We needed. We need it to start a subflow. Um, we need it to start the subflow. Uh, that's not really forwarding at all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know what it's published. 
Yeah, I think this probably came from something else, actually, now. Um, because oh, I, I remember it being used here also. Like, we wanted to forward. We had a published URL operation somewhere. Yeah. Uh, why did we want... Like, uh, let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Um... Yeah, because we wanted, we wanted, uh, yeah, we wanted it to just, uh, da, 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 da. I think, um, I think what we should do for now is just, as long as we're considering forwarding, Let's just only forward to active subflow context. Okay. And that way we don't deal with the fact like cuz what we're stuck on like what I'm what I'm so concerned about here is the fact that memory is going to balloon, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think at this point I don't see how it's not going to and I mean correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't really Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I think the easiest solution to this is we just don't add to anything in memory, right? We say if there are active contexts, right, within the subflow, okay. forward the inputs, right? And so that was basically, I think, that thing you had before the last change. Oh, yeah, before that. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you use, if you do that, we should be okay, um, because then we only, we we do have forwarding, right? If you have an active context, like if you have a, oh, oh, I I think I remember. But does it does it work? Does it? What do you mean? Does it work? Or I mean, uh, like last time I had uh, the contacts were not active. Well, yeah. Okay, so we need we need something in the context to be active, right? So there has, yeah, there has to be the context has to be running. Um, let's see, what was? Oh, oh, okay. I think this is why, because we have that other open issue that says make it so that an operation without any inputs runs as yeah. soon as, yeah. And so this, I believe this was, uh, and this is probably just because I'm not feeling so great and I don't remember exactly, but I I know this has been something that has been on the roadmap for a long time. So there's there's some important reason why this exists. Um, yeah. But because if, if you have, if you have, if you have these operations that get kicked off right as the, the data flow starts like say the the example was like the chat right so we've got an operation yeah, that yeah, basically yeah. pulls gitter and it says okay you know i'm waiting for for i'm a bot and i'm waiting for messages in a gitter channel right mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so if that's the case that input within that context will be running when you start the subflow right so in this case we just need the test case for this would just need some input um let me write this down so that we don't have to. You don't have to listen to all this again. Um, let's see. So, so let's let me just reconcise this. Okay, so let's let's not have a place in memory where inputs get appended and then added to subflows when they start. New context. For now, we may reassess this later. Um, let's only. Oh, so we can like document like whatever things need to be yeah. forwarded should auto start. Uh, say again. Uh, like whatever uh, operations need input should auto start so that the context is running something like that. Yeah, yeah, you need you basically if you if you need if you need to forward yeah, if you need to forward inputs, yeah, you need you need that context running, right? You need something in that context okay. running. All right, so okay. let's only forward inputs to active context text within a subflow. Um uh which was in a previous revision of this PR. Um, 
And then let's say for a test case, uh, <coughs> um, create a operation or have two operations. Have two operations. Um, one which gets started because, or let's see, have yeah you want you want two operations. Um, is git multi in here yet? Did I add git multi? I probably didn't. No, I, don't. No, I, don't I, I got too many branches. I can't remember which ones have been pushed. That's not in here. Okay. Oh, I remember you showing me that, like that get single. Yeah, yeah. There's another one, get multi, that's in a branch that needs to be merged. Oh, I used it in another branch that's in the works. Um, okay, so for a test case, we need two operations. Basically, one, uh, one that gets, or let's see, uh, the context has to be running. Um, it runs until there's no more inputs. So, uh, I'm just thinking of how do we test this. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to test this. Um, yeah, I'm, you'll, you, if you, yeah, try to try to come up with something. If not, it's not too big of a deal. Like, yeah. Um, uh, anyways, uh, this will take some time because all of our exam starts. Around yeah. Three, four days later. Don't 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 worry too much about it. Obviously, like you you've got stuff that's 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 school is important. Um, but yeah, so basically, yeah. this thing like requires me to like sit for some straight and like I can't do it here and of course I have I, usually what I do is like I go and print whatever's happening in memory and I like trace and like add stuff. To memory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, wait. You usually do what? Like I'll just uh, I still haven't figured out like what oh, yeah I like if you're pre can you like give me a rundown on like what happens when what happens like, in memory like uh, first the operation yeah like first uh, like just an abstract like uh, what operations are seen what functions get run when like, yeah first this gets into operation of what like, key value because so what I do is like I just print everything yeah and do you turn on the logging now find out what happened. have you turned on the logging. Uh, like yeah, I I have turned on the login, but I still have to instate it because it's it's not logged everywhere. So. Okay. Hmm. I wonder how. And we can logging make this no, logging does too many things. Yeah, it does have too many logging things. Logging does too many. Yeah. So I just yeah. add print whatever I want. Hmm. Okay. Let me make a note. Let's see. Uh. uh let's see. Let's see. Working. Uh, like oh just what God. happened like an abstract idea is fine like this function happens then then this function then yeah like okay. there are too many context and it's just not it's hard to keep yeah it. there's too many things yeah well create a little overview of how memory works all right i'll try to do this today yeah all right so i'll try to finish the cache down and stuff and do this overview of memory today <clears throat> And that way, I'll try to give you like a diagram too. Oh, cool. All Thanks. right, let's see. We'll make it so inputs uh, only get forwarded to active subflows or active contexts within subflows. All right, cool. All right, I think is, and then I still, I still need to unify the config stuff. Um, as far as this goes, so uh, for you, roadmap wise, um, uh, what else do we have on the data flow stuff? Um, let's see. We have an async iterator. Oh yes, that that that's gonna be that that would be good because that that one is also for the same. So async iterator and the uh, the operations without inputs are kind of like they're both they're both sort of like. Uh, <clears throat> um, they're both sort of like similar. Oh, this to do. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I need to you or I need to provide you with an example for that too. So let me say, John needs to provide example. Yeah, I just uh, this one. The example is kind of long, so I hadn't been able to do it oh, yet yeah. for 
Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'll probably do, provide you the example code on this one. Um, but basically the idea is like same, same sort of thing as like, you know, the operation without input. So the operation without input starts, you know, maybe it's just waiting for one thing, in which case when it returns it, uh, you know, then it's done. Right. But maybe it's an async iterator and it, every time it yields, not like a context manager, right. Where it just yields once, but in an async iterator, it yields multiple times. Every time it yields, yeah. an input gets added to the network. Um, so in this case, right, with this example with the chatbot, um, you know, every time, uh, you know, a new message gets added to the Gitter channel, um, then the input gets added to the network, right? Um, there's another thing, too, that, that, that needs to be, uh, well, will probably be an issue coming up. I probably just need to add this one, but I was trying to figure out how to articulate it best. But... Uh, the oh, actually, I thought it was on the goal. Like, once yeah. uh, Himanshu finishes that NLP generating thing, I think, like, what the example which he said, no, you could directly use it. You look good. The one with the chatbot thing. Oh, the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. It's like if you want to make some demos too, like demos of like combining all of this stuff is super, that'd be super useful, right? Because that's the type of thing we really, we really need some more demos right now. Um, and that's why I think the M the MNIST one is pretty good. That'll, that'll be really good. That's, I mean, that's probably better than the existing demos are like very, very, like too involved. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. so we it need some, time. yeah, they take too much time and, and they aren't perfect right now. Right. So. Um, so yeah, the MNIST one will be good and like, yeah, the chatbot plus NLP, that'll be really, that would be a sweet one. Right. Um, and awesome. yeah, if you did, if you did the async iter operations, you did the no inputs and then we merged, I'd say the NLP models merged. So you could, you could do that. I mean, yeah, you could get that done pretty quickly. I'm, you could probably get that done pretty quickly, uh, you know, relatively speaking, right? Um, so yeah, uh, once you yeah, that would be a good thing to do too. So let me just make a note of that. So, uh, right. well, that would be awesome. Yeah, and then and then document, uh, you know, write up how you did it too, right? Uh, yeah, like we can make it part of a tutorial or something. So that, like the, the, all these data flow and models have come together. Yeah, and then we can put it in our Gitter channel. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really nice. Like, like even if the chatbot isn't that amazing, it will look good since it's outputting something. Exactly, exactly. How to combine. Uh, and, and I think Transformers have really amazing productivity capabilities. So it yeah. should be okay. This will be sweet. That'll be great, yeah. That, yeah, and that's that's exactly that's sort of like an ideal, you know. This is this is like why we've got the data flow stuff in this project is because I've 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 heard a lot of stuff and uh, I've gone to a few things where people always seem to say it's really hard, you know, making machine. Lots of people are making machine learning models, right? The problem is like, okay, yeah. figuring out how to integrate them and then like keeping them integrated is difficult, right? Because yeah. it's like you know you've got so much code, everything always changes all the time. Um, yeah. and so ideally the data flow stuff makes it easy to say, okay, you know, we've got some chat function, you know, you just write the function for the chat bot, you write, you know, you, you've got the function that does the train model. You, you know, we, we eventually will have that web UI. You can just link them together, right? Like just sim simplify this. Um, so this will be good. This will be great. So NLP model and, uh, get her chat. Okay, great. Just oh, we could even put this in JSOC now. Yeah, this would be a I good. Think this, is so, yeah, this is pretty long, also. Yeah, yeah. I and don't know how difficult this is. Yeah, it's kind of difficult, I think, like working with the data flow. But yeah. But yeah, but once it works, it's really, really, really amazing. Uh, this would be a great one. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Are you? I take it you're um you're looking to apply for GSOC as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, this would be, you know, this would, this could be something that you write as a part of your proposal. Of course, if you don't, yeah. you know, already like finish it because you're you're flying through stuff. So, <laughs> so you might you might come up with like three by the time it's the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll see. Oh, yeah, how that but goes. next month is gonna be hard. Like, yeah, yeah. Course cool. of exams and course coming. Up. Yeah. I think it's gonna be the same thing for everyone. Yeah. Like at yeah. least everyone in India, cause it's exam. 
Monday. Yeah, I know my my fiance. She's uh, she's got a bunch of exams coming up this week and next few weeks. So yeah. it's uh, yeah. there's a lot a lot of people people in school. It's 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 rough times. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, is there anything else you wanted to talk to me about? Um, no, that, that's a good one. All right. Cool. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, have a good one and, and good luck on all your exams yeah. and everything. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. That's, see you again. Nice Bye. Yeah. Goodbye.